Good uh, afternoon everybody, well at least it is here in sunny Scotland on a bank holiday Monday but there's no peace for the wicked. I'll be heading off to work very shortly. I'm playing at a at a wedding up in Edinburgh and they're actually American visitors so it'll be interesting. I often ask them if they've heard of Manitowoc. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the facts of this case. Um, First of all, we we know this is a fact that Stephen Avery was obsessed with Teresa Hulbeck. He uh, he tried to impress her apparently by even answering the door wearing just a towel. That is a fact. It is a fact that he lured her lured her to um, the Avery Salvage Yard on the Halloween of 2005 by using a fake name. Um, once she arrived and suddenly realised, oh, I'm in danger. He took her into her his bedroom, that is a fact. Uh, stripped her naked, chained her to the bed, fact. Raped her, fact. Stor tortured her, that is a fact. He got very sweaty, because this was half an hour of fun for him, and he answered the door to Brendan, invited Brendan in, that is a fact. They continued their fun, um, and of course, <laughs> had it been filmed, um, no doubt it would have been one of the goriest snuff movies ever um, and would far sort of uh, outgore the likes of The Counselor or Cold in July. As I say, they, um, they, they, they rape her um, until they take a break at five o'clock for Jodie to phone Steve um, and then they get back to, back to the business of uh, strangling her, raping her some more, cutting her hair don't quite know why they had to cut her hair, but that's a fact. They uh, punched her in the head. They cut her throat. Uh, I think I mentioned strangled her. Did they, did they text her? Uh, that might have been a fact as well. Um, they take her out to the garage because she's still not dead. And they shoot her 11 times. That's a fact. Um, and then they throw her into the back of her RAV4. But then decide to build a bonfire. Take her out of it and burn her body in a big bonfire. And we know that that is all fact. And the reason we know it all to be fact and all to be true, because we were told these things by a highly respected district attorney, the highly respected district attorney of Calumet County called Ken Kratz. These facts were accepted by two courts. They are facts coming out of Wisconsin. You cannot argue with that because they are facts. Does anybody have a problem with that? If you don't, join Thomas Hence's new video channel because I'm sure he's going to be starting one up soon. Um, I've been criticised for uh, trying to, uh, to, to, to sort of uh, raise my profile or be some sort of glory hunter or do anything like that. Um, I'm going to recommend you subscribe to Thomas, Thomas Hence's channel but I don't know if you've ever noticed at the end of every video by just about everybody out there, including even like likes of Eric Cozy, Charlie Bones, they, play, they say, please hit subscribe. I have never once, this is a fact, I've never once said at any of my videos at the end, please hit subscribe. I'm not in this for me. As I said, does anybody have any problem with the facts that come out of Wisconsin? I do. I've spoken to a lot of people from there. They don't trust law enforcement. They don't trust the legal system. Because these facts cannot be trusted. And I'm sure everybody out there would agree with me on this. Now, it's fair to say that some of the facts that I present, you know, which, which, okay, there might, well, there might all, not always be the documented evidence of this, OK, I can I can quite happily accept if people say, well, you know, yours, your facts could be just as spurious. I'm quite happy to accept that. But as I've said many, many a time, at what point do coincidences occur over and over again? And then we not realize that, that it is simply a pattern. Now, um, I've had one or two people criticizing me for asking very polite and civil questions 
of uh, Jerry Butin. Um, it reminds me a little bit of when um, when the billboards were put up in Manitowoc and people were saying, "Oh, that's that's not good. That's not good. You shouldn't you shouldn't do that." Well, um, I have no idea who put the billboards up, but I do know for one thing that Kelton Zellner did not exactly throw her hands up in the air and say, oh dear, the world is coming to an end, did she? In fact, as far as I know, she didn't even reply back um, ask, asking for anything to be done about them and just, just basically ignored it. Um, as I say, I, I do... Um, I, I, I do wonder about the um, the, the situation with uh, Jerry. Um, another film that I that I liked. I don't know if anybody out there has seen it. It's called Man on the Moon. It's starring Jim Carrey. It's the story of Andy Kaufman. Um, and for me, that the moral of the story is never ever take anything for granted. Uh, Andy Kaufman, in case you don't know, was the Lithuanian in the hit TV series Taxi. But he was a, a great comedian and a very great wind-up merchant. One of his greatest ever achievements was he convinced everybody that he was deliberately wrestling with, uh, with women and then uh, deliberately got into a ring with Jerry Lawler, deliberately got, you know, got injured, appeared on the... Uh, it was the Letterman show, um, and there was a there was a fight, and it was all totally staged. And Jerry Lawler has gone on to in record as saying that you know what um, Andy Kaufman did for wrestling was one of the greatest things ever. But the whole idea was to present this 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 huge conflict between them when there was no conflict. You you really should watch the film. Um, I think it's very interesting. Um, it it tells us a lot about people. Um, the other, th the other thing I would say is, I'm like everybody else. I love a western. The thing about westerns is, you know, you you get the, you get the good guys and the bad guys, yeah. And it's clear cut. It's black and white. They are they are the bad ones. These are the good ones, you know. Um, <laughs> even in the film, the good, the bad, and the music teacher. I'm not too sure who the good one is, who the bad one is. Um, I, it, it, it's a bit vague, isn't it? You know. Then, you know, I'm thinking, you go way back in history. Um, I've seen a couple of times various productions. One of the greatest Shakespeare plays of all, of course, is The Merchant of Venice. And it's presented as a comedy. It's, it's re regarded as a comedy because of the, the fact that uh, Shylock is, is sort of put in his place, as it were, by the court scene at the end. But I can't help thinking that in actual fact, it's also a tragedy because it's Shakespeare's commentary on the fact that we have no sympathy for the Jew Shylock who has lost all his ducats and his daughter and is treated so badly by people because of him being a money lender. Um, and as I say, I, I don't quite get this, this black and white all the time. I perfectly accept that Jerry has done you know these world tours and gone on and uh, sp you know spoken to millions of people throughout the world and has you know has, has a very high um, uh, you know is a very um, high up public figure um, but then as soon as a, 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 an awkward question is asked to then ignore that I, I, I do have a problem with that um, you know there's simple questions like why wasn't the cabinet brought into court? Why wasn't an, a reenactment done? If not, you know, another thing, why wasn't uh, Brendan Dassey brought into court and testify as a defence witness and then tell the tell the court exactly what had happened? T to me, that there, there are there are far too many things that we don't hear about, um, and. I don't know if I would go so far as some people in in saying this. You know, it's clear that Len Kaczynski was was in on it as far as the prosecution was concerned. In fact, um, I have seen mention of one or two, um, uh, you know, facts about that, whereby he was probably paid um, by by Peg. Um, 
you know, we, we, we accept that um, a, a vile creature like Len Kuczynski was deliberately brought in to uh, scupper Brendan's chances. Um, and I don't know if I would go so far as to say that, you know, Dean and Jerry were, were deliberately brought in uh, to, to help secure uh, Steve's conviction. But is, is, it, is it really too much to ask? You know, you know is, it, is it too bad to ask questions of, um, of, of their defence of Steve? Um, as I say, given the fact that I, I err on the side of the fact that I think that they didn't ask the questions that they should have done, because it's something that you don't do, even though you're a defence attorney. You know, you, you don't point the finger up the food chain at the likes of Peg Lattenschlager. They, they could see exactly, I think every lawyer in Wisconsin could surely see how, it, how easy it was to frame Stephen a second time and to get rid of his um, civil suit. You know, everything that the commission suggested that, 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 that was then put into law, the... Um, you know, the, the no more tunnel investigation. The, the stipulation that all interviews had to be videotaped. Again, we get the situation where two of Brendan's video, type, video confessions were, were never presented because apparently the, the camera wasn't working. Well, you know, that's the sort of technicality that could have ended the, the, the case there and then. You know, so, so why weren't these things brought up? Um, I, I strongly suspect fear... Um, on behalf of the, the the whole legal system in in Wisconsin, realizing just how much power Peg was able to wield, and uh, you know when she when she told them to jump, they said how high. Bye for now.